Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of Take 5. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Feast of Pentecost, which falls on the 4th of June. But what exactly is Pentecost? To give us an insight into this topic, today we have with us Joe. Joe, can you hear me, Joe? Mama Maria, you're too loud! Hello, Joe, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me again. I take it you want my take on the Pentecost? Yes. Yes, please. That's, that's correct, Joe. Pentecost is a feast that comes 50 days after Easter. It comes from the Greek word Pentecoste, which literally means 50th day. According to Jewish tradition, Pentecost commemorates God's giving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai on the 50th day after Exodus. But for Christians, it is a celebration of the birth of our church. Okay, so Joe, tell us exactly how that happened. About 200 years ago, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, the apostles and their friends, along with Mama Mary, were gathered together in the upper room of the house in which they lived. They prayed for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus had told them to wait for. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Now, there were Jews from different countries who came to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. They heard this sound and curiously came to find out what it was. To their surprise, they heard the apostles speaking in their own language. Some, however, were not very impressed. They said the apostles were drunk. Peter then stood up and went out. Peter, but wasn't he afraid? He denied Jesus three times because he was so frightened, wasn't he? Yes, but now he was filled with the Holy Spirit and had become bold and courageous. He went out and told the people what they were seeing was the work of the Holy Spirit alone, prophesied in the scripture. Peter then called all those present to be baptized, and about 3,000 people were baptized that day. These people were the first Christians, and Peter became their leader, the first pope in the Catholic Church. Wow, that is indeed a very, very interesting story. Did you know that symbols of the Pentecost are the flame, wind, and the dove, which represent the Holy Spirit? The color of the Pentecost is red, which is why priests wear red vestments on this day. Wow, that is interesting piece of information, Joe. Yeah, so now you know what's so special about the Pentecost and why it is considered the birthday of the church. For more information about what happened on that day, read the first two chapters of the book of Acts. The rest of the book speaks about the great things that the apostles did after the Pentecost. So, Joe, tell us exactly what we're supposed to do in order to prepare ourselves for this day of Pentecost. Well, did you know traditionally the eve of Pentecost was a day of fasting for the Catholics? Contemporary canon law no longer requires it, but we do still have spiritual retreats, prayer vigils, and litanies in the days leading up to Pentecost. In some cases, Vigils on the eve of Pentecost may last all night. That indeed is awesome, Joe. I wonder how they celebrate Pentecost around the world. In Italia, it was customary to scatter rose petals from the ceiling of the churches to recall the miracle of the fiery tongues. Hence, in Sicily and elsewhere, in Italy with Sunday, it's called Pascha Rosato. The Italian name Pascha Rosa comes from the red colors of the vestments used in Whit Sunday. In France, it was customary to blow trumpets during the divine service to recall the sound of the mighty wind which accompanied the descent of the Holy Spirit. In Finland, there is a saying known virtually by everyone which translates as 
If one has no sweetheart until Pentecost, he or she will not have it during the whole summer. In Port Vila, the capital of Vanuatu, people originating from the Pentecost Island usually celebrate their island's name day with a special church service followed by cultural events such as dancing. It is really nice to know how Pentecost is celebrated around the world. Thank you so much for explaining this to us, Joe. Thank you to you too. If you ever stop by Italia, don't forget to come to my restaurant. Well, that's all we have for you today on Take 5. We hope this episode gave you an insight to what exactly is Pentecost. I certainly learned a thing or two. If you liked this episode, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more. And if you're already liked and subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit that bell icon for future notifications so you never miss another episode on Take 5. Until next week, we all bid you farewell.